Well, this week, today, we get to start a brand new series that we're calling Thrive. And this series is based on this book that Anna was just talking about, our small groups, called Real Faith for Real Life, Living the Six Marks, Marks of Discipleship. And we're calling it Thrive because, my friends, this is really all about the quality of our lives. And, you know, it's so often to get twisted around what is it that brings us life, what is it that gives us peace and contentment and wholeness. And especially during a time like this where um, we're still so isolated from one another, we struggle uh, not only with our mental health, but with our emotional and spiritual health. And, and so I decided now is the right time to have a series like this where we went back to the basics of our faith, where uh, I could help equip you to find that place of peace and contentment with God, to be restored and renewed in your faith daily, no matter what the externals are, to be able to find that center with God each and every day. And so this series is gonna get at a number of important things. Um, it's gonna get at our purpose of the purpose in our lives, what we're created for. Uh, we're gonna get at God's hopes for us. We're gonna get at this whole idea of peace and contentment and joy and finding a place of centeredness and balance uh, where, we can be, where we can be centered in our faith in really powerful, powerful ways. And so I hope that this series called Thrive will help to answer some of those questions so that we would not just survive in this life, but thrive. And maybe you hear echoing that song by Casting Crowns called We Were Made to Thrive. We're going to sing that actually here in just a little bit this morning. But I, another way I wanted to ask you to think about this today was to imagine uh, an orchestra. An orchestra with the conductor and all the parts. You've got, you know, you've got the winds and you've got the strings and you've got the percussion. Uh, maybe you have some brass. You've got all these different pieces and together everybody is playing their part. And not only different instruments, but different parts within instruments. And as the orchestra is playing, the goal for everyone in that orchestra is to be both in tune and on time. Right, And if you have those things going, if everyone's in tune and they're on time, we get beautiful music, beautiful, sometimes mesmerizing music. Something incredible is born out of that. And as the conductor directs and everybody follows along, a beautiful song is made. You know, I think this idea of thriving has to do with uh, this idea of being in tune with our conductor, with God, our creator, that we as God's people, we as the church, that we are part of this beautiful orchestra. And when we know what instrument we're playing and we, we know what part and we're playing in time and in tune, something beautiful is born out of that. But when, we're not, when we lose sight of the conductor, when our instrument is out of tune, when we lose our place in the song, suddenly everything can get all out of whack and the sound is not so beautiful anymore. I think... That's what God hopes for us in this life, that so much of this Christian faith is about learning to be attuned to what God is doing in the world. And that we as the body of Christ are one orchestra meant to be playing our parts together. And when that happens, that's when we see the kingdom of God coming to life. That's when we see the church being what it was created to be, you and I as individuals being what we are created to be. And when that happens, that's when we have that incredible impact in this world, in our homes, in our workplaces, in our communities, in the world. That's when we as a church, that's when we shine, when we shine our lights for God, when we are in tune. And so I hope that what we discover in this series over the next nine weeks, I hope what we discover here is, uh, is how to remain in tune and on time with our Savior, with the conductor, so that we can make this beautiful music together. And so uh, I've chosen a, a, a primary scripture that will be our basis for this. And what I want to tell you also is that today then, as our lead into this series, is I want to unveil to you our new New Heights logos. And you've already seen us starting to use those, but there's some really intentional imagery. And today I want to unpack that and explain it. And it starts with this passage from Jeremiah. And so let's uh, look at this together. Jeremiah 17. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. 
Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. And this is a powerful passage from Jeremiah, and so I want to break it down together. Let's begin. Verse 7 sets it up by saying, Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. And if you watched Family Faith Night on Wednesday, that was the theme. Trusting in the Lord. Making the Lord your rock. Placing your trust in Him. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. So that's what we're going for as the big backdrop. Trusting in God. Making God our hope and our confidence. If our hope and our confidence is in Christ, if our trust is placed on the rock, we have the foundation we need to thrive in this life. That's our starting place, our foundation. But then the passage goes on to describe what that looks like. And it's this beautiful image of a tree along a riverbank. And so it says, they are like, those who trust in the Lord are like a tree planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. Now friends, I don't know about you, but the last six months or so have been one long drought, haven't they? Emotionally, spiritually, in so many ways, this has felt like a drought. This has been a time of difficulty for Many, if not all of us. And this passage speaks to how we can thrive even in times like this. How even when the outside world around us seems to be falling apart and so many things are out of place, we can still have peace, contentment, and wholeness in our lives. We can thrive as we build our trust on Christ, as our roots go deep into the water to get the nourishment that we need. And the result is leaves that stay green, branches that continue to produce fruit. There's life in this imagery. Do you see the beautiful life here? It's a beautiful picture of vitality and life. And not just life for us as individuals, but life that then is for the sake of the world, for the sake of others. So for the rest of the message today, we're going to unpack some of these pieces. But I want to start then um, by looking at our new logos and describing to you what's in those. And so I'm going to um, pop those up on the screen. And we've got a couple different options that we're going to be switching back and forth between or uh, a couple different versions we'll be using. And so you see what those are here. And you notice the primary images are a tree and a stream, some water. And I want you to think about uh, our, our New Heights area that would be Black Earth and Mazamani. And what is a defining um, image of our whole area? Well, it's the Black Earth Creek. And so we have that water representing our larger service area. And then uh, next to that is the tree. And of course, on our future building site, we have this iconic oak tree. This iconic tree that uh, kind of overshadows everything. And, and you see this big, beautiful tree. And so between these two images here, we first of all have these identifying characteristics of who we are. It's the Black Earth Creek. It's the big tree on our future building site. Those are characteristics we can identify with uh, of what we're about as a community. Now, you might be saying, but where's the cross? Where's the cross in the logo? I missed the cross. I've already heard that from those who I've shared this with. I said, and they, you'd be right to notice that. But do you know that Jesus said, I am living water? He said, I am the vine and you are the branches. And so we're going to unpack this some more because these images actually very clearly call to who Jesus is and who he, who he tells us he is and, and what that means for our lives. And so I want to take you through a few scripture passages now that now connect the dots between these real life images of our, of our area and who we are as a community to images of faith that are meaningful and important to us. So let's look, first of all, at a passage we had last week from Luke 13 the parable of the mustard seed then jesus said what is the kingdom of god like how can i illustrate it well it's like a tiny mustard seed that a man planted in a garden it grows and becomes a tree and the birds make nests in its branches so there's that imagery of the of a tree is image jesus says for us an image of the kingdom of god 
The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed that grows into this beautiful tree. And this tree not only provides shade, but it also provides shelter, a place of rest um, for birds that put their nests in it. And so the image of a tree is this image of God's kingdom coming to life. And then, of course, in John 15, Jesus tells us this. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And so we get this reminder from Jesus here, first of all, the, this organic imagery of Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. We're connected to this living organism that connects us to Christ. But as we, re, as we abide in him, as we remain connected to him, we produce fruit. And of course, that fruit isn't just for us. It's for the sake of the world. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. And we are called to remain in him, abide in him. And he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Now friends, this idea here is going to be central to this whole series. Learning to abide in Christ, remaining in him, being connected to him. The marks of discipleship are all about going deeper in our relationship with God, with Jesus. So that we are connected intimately That's like our roots going deep into that water to get that life-giving, living water, which is what we're going to read about next. And I will say a side note here that in this passage from Jeremiah that we started with, a few verses later, we read this. It says that the Lord is the fountain of living water. Now, Jesus is going to take that idea, and he's going to talk about himself very directly in the same way. But in that Jeremiah passage, a few verses later, the Lord is the living water. But now let's go to John chapter 4. Jesus, and this is a, a, where Jesus is talking with a woman at a well, and it's an interesting uh, story that's unfolding, but I wanted to just zero in today on this part of the passage. Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? And Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Now, I don't know about you, but particularly during this continued time of COVID, some fresh bubbling, a fresh bubbling spring bubbling up within me sounds pretty inviting. Living water that satisfy, satisfies my soul sounds like just the kind of water that I want to be drinking. And as Jesus is talking with this woman at this well, He's not simply talking about a glass of water, a physical need. He's talking about a spiritual need, a need that we all have. And all of us find ourselves often with a thirst for more. We know there should be more to all of this. We want something deeper, more meaningful, more life-giving. We, we, and, and we search for it in all sorts of ways, don't we? We search for ways to find life, things to satisfy that thirst within us, that hunger within us, but nothing seems to fully quench that thirst. And that's where Jesus comes to this woman. He says, listen, if you knew what I was was offering, if you knew who I was and what I was offering, you would ask for this living water. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Living water giving us eternal life, connecting us with God in the deepest kinds of ways, satisfying the thirst within us so that we can thrive, so that we can have life. So I want to put our our logos back up here one more time for you to see. My friends, this is what we're about as a faith community. We are about connecting people with Jesus in deeper, more life-giving ways. We are about becoming the kingdom of God so that others have a place to get shade from the scorching sun, where they can come to get fruit, 
to bless their lives. We're about connecting people with living water that quenches the thirst in their soul. We're about helping our people grow roots down deep into that living water, getting each and every day just what they need to be who God created them to be. You see, this imagery is all about how you and I together are a living body of Christ. God's kingdom coming to life in our community for the sake of the world. But it starts with you and I going, uh, sending these deep roots so that we can thrive, so that we can be what God intends for us to be. So how about you, my friends? Would you like to establish deeper roots? Would you like to find peace and contentment for your soul? Would you like to have everyday access to that living water that quenches your thirst and empowers you to be who God created you to be? See, this is all about how do you want to grow. And if you remember all the way back to the beginning of this pandemic, I asked you that question. I said, how does God want you to grow during this time? What does God want to do in you during this time? And I know that as these months have gone on, we find ourselves going in many directions, and all of this sometimes is overwhelming. But my friends, God has not changed. That living water is still flowing, and Jesus is still offering it to us. And he's still calling you and I to bring his kingdom to life in the world around us. So what's that longing you feel in your soul today? Those whispers from God saying, I have more for you. I have more for you. Well, I invite you these next eight weeks to follow, to dive in deep with us with real faith for real life, living the marks of discipleship. We're going to empower you. We're going to give you tools to build those roots down deep to get that living water that Jesus is offering. So um, I've got my uh, final slide this morning that just says, how will you grow? How will you grow? That's what the theme here is all about. How will you grow? Let's pray. Oh, gracious God. Oh, Lord, you are mighty. You are awesome. You are powerful. And we hear your invitation today to come to receive living water. And you know how thirsty we are. You know how parched our souls have become. And you know, Lord, how we have found ourselves reaching out, sometimes lashing out in all sorts of different directions, trying to grab onto something. And yet there you are, our rock, inviting us to come and build our lives on you. So may we place our hope and confidence in you, Lord. May we place our trust in you. May we be like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that go deep into the water so that we may remain with green leaves and and have fruit being born on our branches that gives life to this world. So come and fill us and renew us and draw us into your presence. May we come to know you more deeply. May we honor you with our lives. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.